Yo, what is up guys? Stellboy here, aka Blue Collar Sports TV. Hopefully you guys are doing well. If you're new here, smash that like, hit subscribe, all of that good stuff. So this video is a quick little preview and prediction for Emmanuel Navarrete versus Oscar Valdez. Now, I'm not going to do like an in-depth uh, prediction video like I usually do. Still feeling a little bit under the weather. Uh, plus I've got certain other things to do as well so it's going to be a quick one but I do think this fight deserves to be covered because ultimately I think this fight in particular has the potential for when it's all said and done to be a fight of the year contender. I have to say I don't think fights like this have happened enough in boxing in recent years and what I mean is two elite level Mexican fighters squaring off in the lower weight classes. It feels like we haven't got many of these sort of fights in recent years. And yeah, to me this fight has all of the ingredients of a super featherweight classic. I'm expecting a good fight, I can't envisage this fight being boring. And I genuinely believe each guy has a real shot of winning this fight. I don't make either guy a significant favourite. I think the bookies, or the, you know, the betting uh, companies, they have uh, Oscar Valdez as a favourite, here in the UK they do anyway, but I've seen a lot of people picking Navarrete, so that's interesting to me. If you're keen on Navarrete, it may be worth placing a bet because Paddy Power, for example, have Oscar Valdez as the favourite, so you're going to get good odds on Navarrete. But this fight for me is hard to call. Oscar Valdez, I would say, is the more experienced guy. Um, I know he's not had as many pro fights, but Oscar Valdez actually had an amateur pedigree, and as a pro, he's fought much better competition. Navarrete has a record of 37 wins, 1 defeat, whereas Valdez has a record of 31 wins, 1 defeat. But Valdez, again, has fought better competition. Valdez has fought guys like Shakur Stevenson, uh, Robson Conceição, Miguel Burchelt, Scott Quigg, you know, uh, he's fought better competition over the years, and he's been fighting at world level a lot longer. So Valdez has the experience, he is the more seasoned fighter, but he has been through several wars in his career. You go back to that Mariaga fight, for example, or the Scott Quigg fight where he had his jaw broken, plus he's coming off a recent defeat to Shakur Stevenson. So yes, he's more experienced, but... I, I, I certainly would say he's taken more punishment throughout his career, so Navarrete is younger and fresher, I would say. In terms of power, I would say it's comparable. Uh, Navarrete, though, he primarily relies on attrition and throwing a bunch of punches to really hurt you, whereas Valdez is more of a snappy counterpuncher kind of thing. He relies more on precise shots, more so than accumulation. And that's really what the intriguing thing about this fight is. It's the stylistic match. Navarrete is the, is the more aggressive guy. He's the guy who throws with higher output. That sort of thing. He really does like fighting on that front foot. So in that sense, yes, he is the traditional Mexican pressure fighter. However, the approach he goes about it is, is very different to the vast majority of Mexican fighters. Navarrete first and foremost is 5 foot 7 with a 72 inch reach. He's quite tall and rangy for super featherweight, even though this is his what, third weight class? Um, he's quite tall and rangy, and he's taller and rangier than Oscar Valdez. And Navarrete pressures you from the outside. He'll, he'll explode with power shots from the outside and at mid range. He, he attacks at weird angles, he can throw combinations from the outside, and he's got the knack of catching you when you think you're out of range because he's got deceptively long arms. And that makes him really effective at almost ambushing you with combinations when you're, when you're not anticipating them. Uh, he's a very hard fighter to read, is Navarrete. Fights in his own rhythm, in his own style. You look at Navarrete and I see a guy who is probably hard to get sparring for, you know, to replicate. He's got his own style kind of thing. Whereas again, Oscar Valdez is much more traditional in his approach. He can be nice and compact. He'll try and soak up the punishment. 
He can catch and shoot with his left hook or his overhand right. He's got a good hard jab, does the basics well, can work the body, good punch technique, turns his shots over well. Um, does all the basics, Oscar Valdez, really well. Plus, he's got a bit of power also. Um, to me, this fight really is going to come down to uh, one thing in particular. And that, for me, is how Navarrete takes the punches of Oscar Valdez. We saw in Navarrete's first fight at Super Featherweight against Liam Wilson, he was badly hurt in that bout. And Liam Wilson isn't like an elite, he's not an elite level fighter at 130. He may prove to be, but as, as, as far as we know right now, he's not. And he badly hurt Navarrete in that fight. Navarrete, as we know, takes risks. He leaves openings. Again, he jumps in with power shots, things of that nature. And for an astute counterpuncher like Oscar Valdez, there's going to be openings. And I'm intrigued to see how Navarrete takes the power and takes the punches of Oscar Valdez. I don't think Oscar Valdez can outwork Navarrete in a tit-for-tat type of fight. Um, if it turns into that fight, I think it starts to favour Navarrete. But even then, uh, Valdez, in my opinion, has the power to make the difference. He's got the counter-punch ability to make the difference. But again, to me, it goes back to the fact that I believe a key aspect of this bout for, uh, for Oscar Valdez is that he needs to get Navarrete's respect and he needs to be able to hurt him. I certainly think he can, which to me makes this fight very hard to call because at that point in time, it's whether Navarrete can get through it and whether Oscar Valdez can close the show. One weird feeling I get from this fight that there was a similar narrative going into the Miguel Burchelt fight. Whereas, you know, we knew Valdez was like the technically better guy. You know, better counterpuncher. But Burchelt was the bigger man who threw more punches, who had this crazy record with a with a knockout streak. You know, he was he was going through guys and beating them up, you know, taking them through the meat grinder. And going into that fight, most people expected Valdez to lose, and we saw it happened. We saw Valdez's superior fundamentals, his counter-punching ability shine through, and he decimated Burchelt that night. Now I know Burchelt was more than likely struggling to make weight against Valdez, and I think that played a factor. But, you know, you got a guy in Navarrete who's had one fight at 130 and got dropped heavily. He got dropped heavily in that fight. Uh, and that really is sticking into my mind going into this one. I know fighters get dropped, I know fighters get hurt, I get it. But it's so recent, it sticks in my mind. But having said that, I mean, y y we can criticise Navarrete's last fight. Uh, maybe even his last two fights, because even against Eduardo Baez, I don't think Navarrete looked amazing. But, you know, you can say the same thing for Oscar Valdez. In his last fight against Adam Lopez, I didn't think Valdez looked anything special. He got outboxed by Shakur Stevenson completely. Robson Conte Sal, he got a gift decision. We're going back to the start of 2021, where Valdez looked really good. So, you know, Val Valdez hasn't exactly been pulling up trees either in his recent performances. I find this fight really hard to call. I find it really hard to call. Again... I think one aspect is, is how Navarrete takes for power, also what Valdez has left, and what motivation he has left. I certainly believe if this fight goes 12 rounds, more than likely, Navarrete will outwork Valdez. That, that's not to say Valdez can't win a points decision, maybe he drops Navarrete a couple of times. Having said that, I could see Valdez getting dropped in this fight. I think this fight can go any way. I could see a close points decision either way. Uh, I could see either guy getting stopped. I could see a draw. To me, it's one of those sort of fights. I think I'm going to go with the underdog, Navarrete, by a majority decision, split decision, close points, something like that. Uh, I've not had time to go back and watch these guys and... Uh, uh, reacquaint myself with their styles and how they match up or what each guy should do. I'm just really, you know, freeballing this one. But 
I'm going to go with Navarrete close on points. I think I, I I really think it's a remarkable fight though. I think it's going to be a fire fight. It's a mouth-watering uh, bout in my opinion, and I'm really looking forward to it. How do you guys see this fight going? Who are you picking and how? Share your thoughts below. Beanie Guy Delboy. Peace.